Katie here. I am here today with an awesome tag. It is the Interview a Scrapbooker tag. So there are a heap of scrapbookers on YouTube participating in this tag uh, today, which is so exciting. Um, and it's a really awesome concept. So Jen uh, is coordinating this tag. And basically what happens is we have sent some questions to a scrapbooker and we have received some questions from a scrapbooker. So I will be looking down at my phone because I've got my questions here uh, and I want to go through and answer them. Now, our video is going to be a bit different. So uh, we share a channel, Jess and I share a channel, which I'll explain in a minute. But you're going to hear from, you know, one of us first and then the other person will answer the same questions. We just could not get in the same room together to be able to film this tag. So let me start. I'm introducing myself. So I'm Katie. I am one half of the Scrappy Sisters here on YouTube, and we also have an Instagram called at the Scrappy Sisters Oz. Everything will be linked down below. Uh, and so I am the older sister <laughs> of the, the duo, and Jess is the younger sister. So that's exciting. Um, how long have I been scrapbooking for? So I've been scrapbooking... Hmm, I was never as into it as my sister was, but my mum got us doing sort of little scrapbooks and things, particularly when we were going on holidays. So as children, we'd write kind of a journal and we'd stick things in and photos and, you know, memorabilia. And I guess, you know, that that is scrapbooking. Um, my sister kept it up. I didn't. And then I found Project Life in 2016, I want to say. And I did Project Life and I got Jess on board for Project Life. And then we've just taken off from there um so that's how long we've been scrapping for we've had our channel for four years so i think we started in 2017 um so yeah that's been a while now it feels like we've been on youtube for ages so four years crazy well i'm jessica i'm the little sister that is part of the scrappy sisters i'm sure katie already told you but we are scrappy sisters oz over on instagram um how long have i been scrapbooking for so pretty much forever uh, mum got us started on scrapbooking when we were kids to sort of do our holiday diaries. We would stick in the photos, we'd stick in the memorabilia, we'd collect and all that. And it kind of stuck with me and kept going uh, throughout the year. I didn't just scrap everything, but if I went on a special holiday or I did something significant, I might make a specific album just for that. Uh, usually 12 by 12, not usually mini albums. Uh, I have quite a few mini uh, 12 by 12 albums Um they're actually in the shed, but I promise you they're in a nice watertight, safe place uh, on my shelf in the shed um, with a whole bunch of other really special albums and things out there. Um, but then, so that was kind of off and on throughout the years. Uh, but in about 2016, Katie introduced me to Project Life. I'd never heard of Project Life. I had no idea what Project Life was. Uh, and she just showed me how quick and easy it was. And I documented 2016 and 2017 purely as Project Life, which I just found super cruisy, super easy to keep up with. But then in 2017, I had my first child and Project Life wasn't enough for me. I needed to go back to doing more. And so that's when I did a bit of a hybrid combination of Project Life and 12x12 12 12 scrapbooking. And it just never went back from there. Um, that's also when she got me started in a kit club. So I had supplies coming in. And once I had the supplies coming in, I just had to use them. Um, so we have had our channel for going on four years now. So quite a while out in the scrapbooking world. Um, what are my 2021 scrapbooking slash YouTube goals? So I only really have one YouTube goal. I'd really love to reach 4,000 subscribers this year. So fingers crossed we can do that. We need about 400 more subscribers. So hopefully that can happen this year. In terms of my scrapbooking goals, uh, I really want to finish my 2020 album. I've only got a couple of months of Project Life left. Uh, if you've followed our channel for a little while, you'll know that I'm sort of dragging my feet with the project life. I'm not finding it as interesting or as engaging as I used to. And it's kind of the, almost like the dreaded part of my scrapbooking. I really enjoy the 12 by 12 part, but not so much the project life part at the moment. So I need to do something to sort of spruce that back up for me again. So that's also kind of a goal. How how can I get some more joy out of the project life sign? Or if I'm not gonna do project life anymore, how am I gonna document the amount of photos that I take um, in one album? 
it takes me three albums for one year but you know what I mean like I don't want that to blow out even bigger by only doing 12 by 12s uh, I really need to finish uh, my youngest son Thomas's one year album that is almost done as well uh, I've only got like maybe a couple of pages of Project Life left to do in that um, but it needs not a lot of journaling but a little bit more thought in its journaling and I just keep putting it off which means I'm losing those memories the important things that I really want to remember so I definitely definitely need to get onto that um, I want to try and keep up with 2021 as much as possible and I've just started scrapping 2013 so I'm back scrapping 2013 so I want to try and finish that so quite a few things on my plate but touch wood I can um, just keep plugging away at those and process through those throughout the year. So we have done a video on our scrappy goals for 2021. I'll leave it links down below. I am also doing monthly check-ins at the start of every month to kind of see how I'm going towards my goals. But in a nutshell, my main goals are I want to finish my 2020 project life, which to be honest, I've barely started. <laughs> I'm doing digital using the Project Life app, and I want to keep up to date with 2021. So I want to finish sort of 2021, you know, at, at the end of the year or at the start of 2022, but I want to keep consistent with it. Um, so far, spoiler alert, if you're not watching our videos, so far so good. I am keeping on track. Um, I also want to finish Lincoln's first year album, which I am also doing as a digital uh, Project Lifestyle photo book so they're my main goals in terms of channel goals we would like to hit 4,000 subscribers I mean it's just a number we love what we're doing we certainly uh, this isn't a job for us it's just a hobby but 4,000 subscribers is our kind of channel goal for the year uh, also personally I would like to apply to a couple more design teams so I am obviously part of the confessions of a paper addict which I love I love cut files as you'll see when I show you my <laughs> favorite layouts um but yeah, that's that's a goal. And then the other thing I'm trying to do is see if I can show you some some here. So basically, I keep all of my scrapbooking collections in little baggies like this. And what I'm trying to do is before I buy a new collection, I'm trying to use up a current collection. So I have a lot of collections, some big ones like the, that Jen Hadfield one that I just held up there, Chasing Adventures. But I also have a few that are like almost done there's a couple on my desk actually uh so this one is a good example so this one indigo and ivy um it's there's not a lot of it left so my goal is to try and use up uh, a whole scrapbooking collection before i bring anything new in and i'm also just trying to in general use up my stash before i buy new things so i'm not on a no buy or anything like that i'm just trying to consciously go through my products before I bring something new into my scrapping room. I am also, I, I haven't started yet, but I am clearing out my room. So, uh, and kind of going through and purging everything. And I want to film a scrapbook kind of room tour and I'll, I'll bring you guys along on the, the purging journey. Um, so there, so there's some of my goals for 2021. Check out our video if you want to see it all. We did a face-to-face -face with the two of us and Jess's boys made some cameo appearances. So I'll try and remember to link that down below as well. Now, um, Jen has asked us to share some of our favourite layouts with you all. So I will quickly do that. I will preface this by saying I've, I've just pulled out five and they are from 2020. And that is mainly because these albums here behind us are 2020. Um, so I, I keep... In my scrapbooking room, which I'm filming this, I keep my sort of current albums that I'm working on. These have got various sort of unfinished projects and, and page protectors and things like that in it. Um, but my finished albums are actually downstairs. And so I was, a, I was a little bit lazy and I didn't go downstairs to check through my older albums. So these are sort of favorite layouts that I did in 2020. Now, <laughs> five of them have cut files uh, and one does not so that I guess gives you an indication of currently what I'm loving about scrapbooking so let me start with my earliest layouts to, to go through so this one oh, if I can hold it back uh, this one is um, clearly my 2020 cover page I did film a process video for this it is for confessions of a paper addict which I think most of these are uh, so yeah I love cut files Love this one, love the way it came together. It certainly helps that it is Coco Vanilla Studio. They are, it's not relevant to this tag, but they are my favorite designer. Um, 
and then I've got this one which I love again it's a stitched cut file which is a little bit hard to see it's a stitched cut file with a lot of mixed media in the background and then these butterflies are also a cut file from Confessions of a Paper Addict love that one and this is another fave again using Cocoa Vanilla Studio super cute um, it's a little tricky to see actually because there's a lot going on in this layer but it does use like an antler floral antler cut file that one and then this is a recent one I only made this in February I think on oh no, March March because this was for Confessions of a Paper Addict's birthday cut file uh, sorry Confessions of a Paper Addict's birthday hop so it was a celebration theme so that's that one that I love and this one I also love which is not a cut file <laughs> uh, so this one I made I think it was for scrap timber actually last year uh, so I've used some Paige Evans this was a pattern paper which I cut up distressed the edges and then you can see I stitched and added sequins and then yeah just added little embellishments that um, correspond with the colour of the rainbow and I really love that one so they are some of my favourite layouts you can see I love cut files if you watch our channel at all you'll know I love cut files um, so yeah now this was so tricky I have a lot of albums and a lot of layouts and I love them all for different reasons so I really really struggled to pull out layouts and to keep it to like a minimum number so I ended up pulling five because that's the number that Katie and I agreed on even though I could have pulled out a thousand uh, and I tried to really limit so I don't have any super new layouts uh, I feel you've seen those recently so I wanted to pull some more older stuff and I also wanted to explain why so this was the first layout that I pulled uh, so this layout is a scrap lift of um, an Inky Quill layout, so a Del Toomey layout. Uh, it was done, so the date of these photos, April 2017. I'm not 100% sure when I scrapped booked them, but it would be a similar time. So the stencil that I used is actually... Um, a hot glue gun like you know I don't know if you've ever seen that hack where you like hot glue on plastic so you can peel it off um so I hot glued on plastic to make a stencil and then I put like a dinner bowl on top of the page sprayed with all my spritzes and then pulled it all off and you can see the stencil was amazing but it didn't really keep so it's kind of the only layout I got to make with the hot glue gun stencil and it used a lot of hot glue so I absolutely adore this layout but the stencil was not a keeper so just a bit of fun so I really love that one um, my next layout I also um, is an, a photo from October 2017 now these will have been made in approximately 2017 I just don't know when um, I just really love this one because I use like a paper weaving technique to make the ice cream cone which I think is um, not unique it's just different you don't often do that I could have just cut a random triangle but instead I wanted to put the texture of the waffle cone and then all the little teeny tiny circles that I cut using my uh, die cutting machine and then even just having the photos of Jack in circles as well so I just really loved that and then more circles so like just all the circle things and not really any embellishments on this because it kind of you know speaks for itself so I really loved that then this layout was in 2019 this was when I first got onto the design team for confessions of a paper addict um this might have been this I was trying to think if this is the first round of the second round but really early on in the piece anyway I think it's the first round and I stitched in chain stitching this beautiful beautiful cut file uh, I'd never done that before so I'd never used my cutting machine to cut 
um, a stitching file before. I'd never stitched on paper before and, you know, go big or go home, I decided to do huge. Uh, and I just love that. Okay, next one. Oh, this one is just a favorite. I just, I loved it the minute I made it and I still love it now. So this one is um, using a Confessions of a Paper Addict cut file. I specifically requested this bookworm cut file. Didn't know what it was going to look like. I just asked for a bookworm uh, and I adore it. I used mostly uh, Bohemian Dreams from Coco Vanilla Studios, um, bit of gesso in the background and just, I even just love the background paper. I just, I've just always loved this layout. It just speaks to me, uh, including the really gorgeous little face in there as well. And that's Thomas in case you're playing along at home. Um, this one. This was for a telephone hop. Um, I think I was scrap lifting Katie actually as part of the telephone hop, but there was just different aspects of this that I really loved. I loved using these border stickers. I find border stickers are really challenging to use and I used a whole page of them here, which I was super proud of. Um, I drew with white pen on thickers for the first time. Don't know if there's too much glare for you to see that, but uh, in real life, that really makes those thickers pop, which I totally loved and I'd never done that before. Um, and I just loved the feel of how this layout came together. I felt it really all set together nicely. Then last one is this one. Not sure why I pulled this one specifically. I just love it. Um, I love the little splotches of mixed media in the background. Not super big, just kind of catching the colors. I love the little clusters um, of little boy things because, you know, he's such an adventurous little boy. And I just, I love the feel of all the hexagons. There's sort of a background cut file there, but then there's also the hexagon shape has come through by cutting out my photos in that design as well. So that is my fifth layout. We were sent five questions from Christy at Christy's Beautiful Life. If you are a regular on our channel, you are also probably a regular on hers. Uh, but she sent us some five questions to answer. So Jess and I will both answer these and there'll they'll probably be a lot of overlap. So the first question is, what made you decide to create a YouTube channel together versus having separate channels? Um, and so that was my completely my fault <laughs> i actually messaged jess and said i want to start a youtube channel i think it would be fun but i'm just a bit worried that i won't be able to keep up with the content on my own you know new scrapbook as well do you want to come in together on a channel and that's how we started so jess was not reluctant but she certainly wasn't as keen as i was but yeah we started there and now we're loving it and to be honest working together on a channel works really well because it is hard to keep up with videos and content sometimes so it's nice to be able to share the load um, and that means we can remain consistent which is fun well actually i would never had any intention of creating a youtube channel katie totally 100 percent dragged me into it um, she wanted to start one up and I was super supportive of her doing one, but she was really conscious of um, the amount of commitment that would be and being able to keep up with regular videos and therefore building the subscriber base and just all the things that come along with having the channel and the maintenance of having the channel. And so she thought having the both of us do that and therefore being able to share the workload would be a benefit and would be easier. And I think she was correct. Second question, do you find you're drawn to finding inspiration before creating or do you just wing it and create your own thing? So I think what Chris is asking is, do we find inspiration before we start a layout or do we just start a layout with the photos and go? Um, and so I honestly do both, but more than you know, more often than not, I just kind of wing it. I get a photo, I either pair it with a cut file that I think works really well for the story I'm trying to tell, or, you know, I've got a collection that I'm working with and I kind of let the collection or the cut file sort of speak to me and then off I go creating a layout. Sometimes though, I will jump on Pinterest or I've seen layouts that I love other people create and I do want to scrap lift them. So I do do both, but I definitely wing it more than start with an inspiration if that makes sense i am a hundred percent certain that i'm going to say the exact opposite answer to what katie says i 100 percent need inspiration before i get started i may not directly scrap lift somebody um or a particular layout but i definitely need to just have a bit of a search and a bit of a look see and 
feel motivated to do something. I might need a sketch. I might need a mood board. I might need a challenge of some description. I might just, oh, I really love that aspect of a particular layout. So then that's going to get my ball rolling. So I definitely need some form of inspiration, even just a cut file, which then can help me get started. Whereas I am certain that Katie just picks up her photos and just goes. She is just amazing. I don't know how she does it. Uh, she hardly ever messages me to check, oh, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? I think I message her every single layout I ever make. Our third question is, who started scrapbooking first and how did you get the other sister to join in? I kind of answered this at the start, but essentially I would say we both started at about the same time with mum wanting us to do kind of journals and stuff while we were traveling, particularly for holidays. Um, but realistically, Jess definitely was a more consistent and avid scrapbooker than I was. Uh, she was doing kind of 12 by 12 layouts and things like that for forever. She She continued that. I didn't continue it as much um but i started i guess project life first in 2016 and then got jess hooked into that form of scrapbooking and now we both do kind of a hybrid of project life and 12 by 12 um yeah so i technically jess started first but i dragged her into the kind of youtube creative world so no one really started first um We've, we've always both kind of dabbled. It's always been an interest there in the back of our minds. Uh, but Katie definitely started the Project Life first, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and I had no intention of ever doing that. I didn't even know what it was. Um, but she definitely pulled me into that. And then once we got the channel up and going, um, the 12 by 12s just kind of naturally followed through after that. She definitely got back into it and was doing it more full time uh, before I was. Uh, question number four, when you're not scrapping or being a mum, what else do you enjoy doing? So I have a little bit more time than Jess. I only have one child. <laughs> um, but for me, it's definitely music related. Um, so if I'm not scrapbooking, which is often what I'm doing in my spare time and I'm not, I'm not mumming, um, then I usually am playing music. So I'm in two bands, a brass band and a concert band. I play the tenor horn and the French horn. Um, I have done for years. Um, and my partner is the conductor of both of those bands that I play in. So we're a very musical family. Um, and so music definitely plays a massive part in my life. So that's what else I do. Is there time for anything else? Uh, I also work, so I go to work two days a week. Um, but honestly, I don't think I have time for anything other than scrapbooking work and just looking after my boys. I love to sing, uh, but I definitely don't do it. Uh, like as in I, I physically can. I'm not just singing to my hairbrush singer. I, I actually have a band or have been part of a band. We don't have it anymore because just too busy to to do it um the year before i had jack i was in musical theater um so i would love i would love to do more with my music and with my singing but while these boys are so little it's just not gonna happen unfortunately uh, question number five this is the last question do you create a layout all in one sitting and how long does it typically take you to scrap your layout so <laughs> my answer is actually probably the same as jess's pre-children or pre-child for me I would always just create in one go sit down make my layout start to finish you know one sitting um for me I can a quick layout is half an hour um probably more often than not it's kind of 45 minutes to an hour and a half probably um it depends what I'm doing if I'm you know using cut files it does take a while to back the cut file so I will often do that like sitting in front of the television. So I don't really count that as part of my kind of creating layouts because I've already sort of backed my cut file, you know, in front of the TV at night. And then when I come to putting my layout together, um, putting something like this together, when I've already backed the cut file, I can do in about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Um, but a more intricate, like this one took me days because I had to, you know, distress all the edges stitch do all the stitching with the sequins and then come in and you know finish off the layout so it really depends on the type of layout um, now though having a child I'm more often than not scrapping you know during his nap and so I'll do as much as I can but often I'm interrupted and I kind of leave something I have to come back to it to the next day so yeah that's a twofold answer so I would love to create a layout all in one sitting I often try 
um, but I do get quite a lot of interruptions and it's not usually a realistic thing that can happen. Um, a layout would typically take me, if I was sitting down and doing it in one sitting, probably an hour to an hour and a half, quite a while. Um, that involves the sending it to Katie to check in. Um, but often it takes me over a couple of days uh, just popping back and forth, having a little fiddle with it, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. I don't usually get chunks of time to just sit down and scrapbook. Um, if it's sort of like an easy layout in my brain, like I've really planned it out or I'm strongly scrap lifting someone, I can probably get it done in about half an hour to 45 minutes. But a layout that's more originally mine and solely created by me, um, definitely takes me a lot longer. I feel like I'm a bit of a long scrapbooker, whereas Katie's super quick, short, sharp and shiny. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's that's all of our questions. That's that, That's it for the tag. So the interviewer scrapbooker tag, now there's lots of scrapbookers participating. So if you haven't or you're not subscribed to everyone, everybody will be linked in the description box down below. It's a very long list. I apologize, my description box will be massive, um, but go through and check everybody's out. We sent five questions to Crystal Barrett at Pineapple Papers. So definitely, obviously the questions that she's answering came from us. Um, so go and check out everybody, subscribe to new channels, go and enjoy getting face-to-face -face videos. Some people may be, you know, doing videos with their hands only because not everyone's comfortable having their face on camera, but definitely go check out everybody's videos. Thank you for watching ours. Please subscribe if you're not already and help us achieve our goal of 4,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. Um, we look forward to having you along and thank you to those who are already subscribed to us and we'll see you in our next video. Bye. And we will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.